Columbus Circle greatly upped their handheld portable clone video game console making game when they produced the 16-bit Pocket Plus MD. But is it worth it? Using modern tech, Columbus Circle made a better portable 16-bit Sega Mega Drive than Sega did. The 16-bit Pocket MD Plus is an extremely well-designed piece of tech kit. It is shaped like a curved rectangle with concave pill shapes on the horizontal ends. The shape of the unit is a little weird, but is very ergonomic and comfortable in your hands. The overall body is hedgehog blue plastic with white highlights. The original 16-bit Pocket MD is black like hardware by Sega, but this updated 16-bit Pocket MD Plus is blue. No doubt it is designed to be reminiscent of a certain famous hedgehog who likes chili dogs. It feels really good in your hands. It's small enough to fit in your pocket without the cartridge. It is designed to take Japanese Mega Drive cartridges, American-sized Sega Genesis cartridges, and European Mega Drive cartridges, but more on compatibility later. It is powered by four AAA batteries with excellent battery life using modern rechargeable batteries. The batteries also give it a centered heft and it feels well balanced with the cartridge sticking out. In the middle of the unit is a 2.5 inch LCD screen that displays 16-bit Sega Mega Drive graphics at a native resolution. The screen is also not as deep inset as the other Columbus Circle handhelds, namely the 8-bit Pocket Plus, and as a result it looks great. There is no noticeable ghosting, tearing, squishing, stretching, smearing, or lag. The screen is crisp and colorful and holds up beautifully when dealing with fast-paced movement like Sonic or Rocket Knight Adventures. RPG text is quite legible. I am looking forward to playing the Shining Force and Fantasy Star games on this system. The Pocket MD Plus uses a built-in 6-button controller layout with a mode button for the handful of games that require an OG Sega 3-button setup. Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat are a joy to play on this system. There also is a reset button on the front of the unit for switching games in multi-carts. The D-pad is quite good and feels responsive to shoot 'em ups action games, and fighting games. The sound is also quite good despite the included internal tiny speaker being a little quiet. I've had a good time playing Streets of Rage on it with wired headphones. Using modern tech, Columbus Circle actually did make a better Sega Nomad than Sega did using 90s tech. It is not an emulator, and it boots up instantly. Like other Columbus Circle systems, it is a system-on-a-chip clone, but it is a very, very good one. Almost too good, but I'll get into that momentarily. It does not play virtual racing. The Mega Everdrive X5 works without the Sega Master System game support, and my Terra Onion Mega SD does not work at all, even for Genesis games. Every indie game on cartridge that I've tried works great, as did the bootleg multi-carts that I've tried. When I upgraded to my Terra Onion Mega SD, I gave my old Mega Everdrive X5 away. So I got a bootleg multi-cart called the 408-in-1 Game Cartridge for Sega Mega Drive Genesis 16-Bit Game Card Classic Collection, and it works like a champ. The 16-bit Pocket Plus MD has phenomenal compatibility and has been able to play every single game that I've tested on it without issues or problems with the simulation on the clone hardware. Now, the 16-bit Pocket MD Plus presents itself to the software as an NTSC J Sega Mega Drive system, and as a result of it, some of the games that perform region checks do not initially work. PAL and North American games with region locking refuse to work, 
which means the 16-bit Pocket MD is imitating a Japanese Mega Drive console on a hardware level. My copy of Super Street Fighter 2 did not work since it was detected as an NTSC-J system. Neither did US Sonic 3. However, Sonic Knuckles did work, and I could play Sonic 3 and Knuckles on it with good old lock-on technology. Luckily, a vast majority of Genesis MD games are not region locked, and a few that are locked can sometimes work by holding down start while booting it up. The region locked games that would not play on a legit cartridge would play just fine on my bootleg multi-cart cartridge, so chalk one up for having a pirate version around as well. This is the first clone system that I've dealt with that was accurate enough to have these kinds of region locking lockout issues. It has AV out through a little AV cable, but I don't see much of a point to it considering if you have this device, you probably have other ways to play Sega Genesis cartridges. The analog video is passable on a CRT TV, but you're not going to want to use this to play on a modern LCD TV via HDMI. There are a lot better options for that. But when it comes to playing Genesis Mega Drive games in the palm of your hands without using emulation, this is going to be tough to beat. It is available at Surugaya for $70 without shipping and on Amazon Japan for $72 with $19 for shipping to the US. Columbus Circle's 16-bit Pocket MD Plus is so close to sweet Sega Genesis perfection in the palm of your hand. Some people play games on their phone. I would rather play Sonic 2 and Knuckles using Sega's lock-on technology. And I don't care who sees it. It really is an excellent way to enjoy your 16-bit Sega game library. It blows me away that this system isn't more well known about. I didn't know it was possible for a game system to be a hidden gem cult hit, but here we are. Of all the clone systems that I've reviewed, this one is the closest to being as good as something made by Nintendo or Sega. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with friends and enemies who are into retro video games. This is 8-Bit Joystick. Stay awesome. Play retro.